Good afternoon. Okay, so this lesson will we will be dealing about grammatical competence and mainly communicative competence and the first one is grammatical competence. The idea here is that I want you to be as linguistically knowledgeable as possible. That's why I discussed first the language, the nature of language. If you may remember, this is a sort of review. No, no. And the importance of mastering the language is a prerequisite for, is a prerequisite for you to understand what's the purpose of you being here. Okay? To learn the language is to learn the basics of the language. To learn the language is also to understand the meaning of language. The meaning of language comes from a different thing, comes from many things, okay, to be exact. But communicative competence is one of the primary contributors to the person or to those people that are highly linguistically knowledgeable. That's the title of our lesson two, okay? Linguistic knowledge. And in today, we are going to delve into the concepts under the linguistic knowledge. So there is this guy, Delheims, who developed communicative competence. Okay. According to Del Himes, and specifically he developed this in 1972. Yes, 1972. Number one is grammatical competence. There are four competences or competencies na kailangan na to i-consider, ha? Okay? So, for you to become an efficient English majors and English language speakers or effective English language users, not just in English language, but specifically in all languages, okay? In general, you have to be very efficient in using any kinds of language and through using these four and being aware of these four competencies, you will become effective in communicating. Number one is grammatical competence. When you, we say competence, it is your expert expertise rather in a certain thing. Okay? Grammatical competence. This one deals with your knowledge and basic linguistic features, okay? Basic linguistic features, that means to say your grammatical skills and knowledge, okay? Instead of saying the ungrammatical statement, you tend to say and settle for the correct or grammatical sentences. For example, so spelling, if you know the correct spellings of the words that you are using and writing and speaking, you have the grammatical competence, okay? Sentence formation, instead of saying, the, jo uh, the job finished the man, that's kind of absurd, but it's instead you having this competence right here, the grammatical competence, syntactically speaking, you will achieve the correct formation of the sentence instead of the job finished the man, Ang dapat, the man finished the job. More understandable. Diba? So, in the structures of the words, you have the knowledge. In the spelling of the words, you have the knowledge. When you have all those things that I've mentioned, you have the grammatical competence. From the word itself, grammatical competence. Okay? You follow strictly and religiously the rules of language. Okay? Not just the use of certain high in words no it's not like that but grammatical competence deals with the 
obsession of the correctness of the basic features of language. Okay? So, gagmay lang abutang ang grammatical nga mga statements mo bagting dayo rin yung kalinga. Okay? No, that's not what it should look like. No? Because as a person having grammatical competence, we should always settle for what's correct. Okay? Always be technical uh, in terms of language use. In terms of in terms of our grammar. Okay? Grammatical competence includes knowledge of phonology. The study of sounds. You pronounce the words correctly. Okay? You pronounce the English words correctly. Orthography deals with spelling. Vocabulary, if you are improving, continuously improving your vocabulary, you are continuously improving also your grammatical competence because this deals with your usage or uh, utilization of words. Okay? So, in vocabulary formation and sentence formation, as I said earlier, the syntactic formation or the arrangement of the words within a phrase or within a sentence. Okay? Dapat naka, uh, in accordance siya sa right or correct grammar. Okay? That's grammatical competence. One must have that for uh, communicative competence to be achieved. Okay? That's number one. Number two is social linguistic competence. On sa man puning social linguistic competence, when we say social linguistic, from the social linguistic, having trouble, ano? Linguistic competence, the idea here is being knowledgeable in language use. Okay? You use language in a specific situation as needed. You use language from the word itself, sociolinguistic. Okay? You use language according to the societal occasion where language must be used. Especially in English language, this is very common, class. I, I normally notice people using English language even outside the classroom, even in a normal setting. Maskin nanyangi nag English English. No? You think that's right? Maskin ang imong kaistoria. Depende sa imong kaistoria. That's the point. No? Ang imong kaistoria is, let's say, a vendor. Like tricycle driver. Okay? I don't think it's quite... I'm not saying that you are not allowed to use English language at all in those moments, but think of it as a uh, necessity. Think of, think, think of the language as a necessity. Okay? Think of a language as a pragmatic use. Use it uh, pragmatically. Use it as you are using it in a correct and proper way. For example, sa tricycle driver, mag English English ka. I don't think it's the right situation to use English language, no? So, if you try to distinguish the difference and the existing differences of when is language useful, then you have the sociolinguistic competence. Okay? It says here that it includes knowledge of sociocultural use or rules of use of language. It is concerned with the learner's ability to handle um, settings, different settings, topics, and communicative functions. There are tons of communicative functions of the English language alone. Maskin sa isa kalingwahe, ang English language, dagan siya mga um, occasional use, for example, in events, formal events. When you are invited as a speaker, of course, you will use the English language. Depende sa theme, dagay mga considerations din ha. Okay? But in this classroom, I encourage you to speak the English language because you are all English majors. Okay? You are aspiring to be an English expert, no? Because you've chosen this path, I assume that 100%, if not the majority of you here, can speak and articulate well. Okay? I believe that that's the basic use of language to be used in a particular appropriate setting. Meaning to say, you have the pragmatic competence, you have the occasional competence where you will just get um, rid of the language when it's not needed. 
especially English language. Pwede good magbisaya. I'm using the multilingual approach or the bilingual approach right now as I am teaching the content just for you to understand what I'm saying. Okay? Not all the time language or English language must be used 100% whole throughout the setting but rather you should also consider the situation. For example, as I said, sa imong kaistoryan, magdepende sa imong kaistoryan. Sociolinguistic competence. Sabtan? Okay. That's for number two. Number three is discourse competence. Okay? Number three is discourse. Um, discourse competence. Discourse competence deals with from the word itself again etymologically speaking i mean practically speaking discourse means to talk okay you have the knowledge of bringing the ideas into action or bringing the ideas into reality by just making your um, words understandable enough okay making your ideas be understood by other by other people especially your audience just like me, right now, I am trying my very best to let every one of you here understand. And no one will be left behind in terms of the topics that I am discussing. Okay? This course competence, it says here that it is related to the learner's mastery. Okay? Take note of the word mastery of understanding and producing texts in the modes of listening, speaking, and reading and writing. For example, if... I am, if I don't have a discourse competence, no, I will struggle speaking. I'm struggling here speaking because most of the times I am not very, uh, no, I do not possess this kind of competence, discourse competence. So it is a must that you have a discourse competence for you to master the English language or any language whatsoever. Even in Bisaya, dapat kabalog yapon ka mo articulate even in Bisaya, even in Tagalog and in, especially in English. Okay? That's discourse competence relating to speaking, listening, and writing. When you write an essay, you write something, a journal, what, whatever, no? you need to, to use the grammatical competence, the social linguistic competence, and discourse competence. Discourse competence deals with the competence of how we execute our skill in language. Okay? How we implement our linguistic skills so that others can understand and get what we are saying. Okay? So that others can consider our words as intelligible enough and what is it that we are actually trying to imply Makasabot yun sila. Okay? You have the discourse competence. You can talk efficiently. You can write coherently. No? You have the discourse competence. Just the simple types of skills. It deals with the cohesion and coherence in different types of texts. Not just in speaking, but also in writing. If the words there are organized, properly arranged, no? Grammatical ang mga sentence dito, then that would fall into this course competence because you implement your knowledge accordingly. Okay? Sabdan. You get the point? Sige, let's move forward. Strategic competence is the last one. Strategic competence. Strategic competence deals with your, again, strategy. How you strategize as a communicator. No? And this is very crucial. This is, I, this is, I think, one of the, if not the most crucial competence of all. Okay? Sa tanan, I think this is necessary. This one is also necessary. But this one here is how you adjust according to the situation. For example, just like for the the social linguistic competence kaganina, no? Magstorya og English sa tricycle driver mas kindili makasabot ang tricycle driver. Is it right? Di ba dili? It's not really practical, no? You're being very idealistic if you use certain language, especially the English language, 
in every situation that you come across sa imong experience sa life. It's not very practical, correct? So, how would you actually adjust according to the situation is what the strategic competence suggests para mas masabtan. I will give you a practical example. Do you have this friend, a seatmate maybe, or a close friend, or a family member, na maglisod pag describe sa exact word? And then, for example, let's be very specific. They tend to struggle in identifying the exact term. Okay? And I have this classmate before, my first year, 2018, way back 2018. And classmate na ako siya sa kaninga subject, Linguistics 1, with Mr. Fulgarinas before. And wala siya kabalo sa, sa subject description or subject uh, course title nga. Ling 1, di ba Ling 1 na nakabutang sa inyo ha? Ling 1 or Linguistics 1 or Intro to Linguistics. She has no idea na yung ana ang subject description. So what he did was, he asked me, Unsa pa gani ito atong subject nga atong klase bitaw about language? Ana siya. And unsa pa gani ito nga si Sir Fulgarinas gani ang, ang, ang ano? Sir Fulgarinas gani ang atong instructor? And katong mag-talk mag, Atong gitalk about gani per me kay, Katong mga Mga components of language Basic components of language Katong gani And ako Naghinahinay po kung understand Sa iyang ano Sa iyang gipang sulti I'm, I'm slowly processing The little details Nga iyang gibato sa ako ah, Ako Wait Do you mean Introduction to linguistics? Ano siya? Yes! What you did Or what I did there was the strategic competence. Okay? You strategize for the conversation to go smoothly. Okay? This involves paraphrasing. For example, I'm using the English language, imagine if, okay? Imagine if nag-use lang ko ang English language whole throughout sa atong meeting. Do you think that it would be easy for you to digest the concepts? No. Probably you will struggle. No, practically speaking. Sakto? If English na nan, sagot mo. Dili, mas maayo man ang naibisaya, no? Kay aron masabtan ba? And maka-adjust po ito sa konsepto. Correct? Agree mo? Diba? That's very basic to, ano, to think. And one way of showing paraphrasing as an example is what I am doing right now. Okay? from English and ibisaya na po na ako. And this is very common sa inyo ha. On a daily basis, you always come across the experiences, communicative experiences ninyo na pag naamoy ka istorya nga wala bitaw kayo makasabot sa imong gipang istorya. Di ba mo rephrase or mo paraphrase ka sa imong mga sentences, sa imong mga words? Okay? If I read wholly, no, holistically, the words coming from your module, do you think that I will make sense here, standing in front of you? If basahaw nang ako, strategic competence refers to compensatory strategies in case of grammatical or sociolinguistic. Di ba? I don't have any strategy to make you understand the content. So strategic competence is how you adjust to make the audience digest your input. Okay? To make the audience understand what you are saying. That's strategic competence. Nasab na class? Did you get the point? Of the four competencies. Sab Grammatical competence, social linguistic competence, discourse, and strategic competence. Questions? Sige. Additionally, Sa strategic competence, it is the use of reference sources. Katong <clears throat> example na ko gahina nga, I am just receiving words, descriptive words, and the exact term has been uh, forgotten by my friend, and gitabangan lang na ko siya. Okay? That's, ano, that's strategic competence. 
uh, requests for repetition if wala gyud ka wala gyud ka ma subti sa im sa imong ano sa imong for example you talk to your seatmate and your seatmate uh, seatmate doesn't fully understand what you're saying and your seatmate requests for you to say again the words no you repeat the words this time with simple words na imong gamiton para mas masabtan ingana ah do you mean like this instead of saying the technical words from the book i explained it to you as if we are just having a conversational discussion okay that's this uh, discourse competence okay sabtan sabtan okay na Okay. Sige, let's move forward. These are the strategic competence, or uh, I mean, these are the communicative competence. For us to communicate effectively, we must possess and inculcate these four competencies. Okay? Now we move forward to the next topic. The world Englishes. World Englishes. Why is there a world Englishes? Why are there variations of English? Have you noticed nga lain ang spelling sa, sa British English? Lain ang spelling sa... Can say na ay laptop din eh. Or the one that uses Microsoft Word often. Na? Pag mag-spell out ka na, mag-type ka ng organization nga word sa Microsoft, sa Word ba? Familiar mo na? No. Microsoft Word, kana maghimuog project or computerized tasks. Microsoft Word man atong gamiton. Di ba na i autocorrect? No, na i autocorrect or mupula ang ano, mupula ang ang text pag wrong spelling. Even if mag magbutang lang ka og ano, even if you just type organization word, but the spelling is like this. Letter S ang imong organization. Diba mo pula ang ano? Mo pula ang mo correction ang Microsoft. Right? Because you might think that this is not the correct spelling. But in reality there are just there are just variations of English. It's a matter of the differences of the accent. Just like when we try to curse in Bisaya, no. Ang maguna is Y A W A, letter Y ang maguna. If Cebuano ang curse word, but if Bisaya or Surigao nun, J A W A. It's a matter of the accentual differences. Okay, that's the <clears throat> the difference nga dapat niyo in notice. But in world Englishes, there are variations of Englishes. There are um, varieties, so to say, of Englishes. And we need to be um, familiarizing those types of Englishes. Because there is American English, not a British English, just like what I gave you as an example there. Naapun tay Philippine English, Australian English, Indian English, and so on and so forth. Daghan klasi klasi na English. Agree? Diba na amoy na notice nga. Why is there a difference? Or why is there a distinction when we try to speak English in a Filipino manner? Why is there a difference if we compare to if we compare it to the standard English? No, ano na ay diperensya yun? Here, the world Englishes, according to this one famous Indian American linguist named Braj Kashru. No, take note of this one. Si Braj Kashru, Indian American linguist, he proposed the theory, <laughs> okay, of uh, the three concentric circles. The the three concentric Three concentric circles of Englishes. As I told you earlier, the ganta'y classic classic ng mga 
variations meaning to say if na ay uh, nakasaksi man mo sa pandemic no nakasaksi ba sa pandemic katong mag mag mask mask o mag face shield face shield katong na katong buwisit nga experience nato katong ni age no na ay lockdown di ba kinsay gusto mo balik to nga ano nga panahon kay ato ipa time travel ganahan mo ato nga panahon Diba? It's, it's very hassle for us, no? Human beings. Okay, we cannot simply socialize. Socialization is what we are, ano, um, aftering as human beings. It's very vital for human beings to socialize, and yet it is restricted and prohibited when COVID came, no? And sa COVID, dilita, bawal magpikit-pikit. Bawal yung ani. Dapat social distancing, No? And you notice the virus, the COVID-19 has variants. No? When we say variants, klase-klase, ng mga igsoon or kaparehas lang. Na another type ba ng, ng virus? No? Ang Omicron nga variant, no? ang klase-klase pa ng mga variant. Kadumdum pa mo? Uy, kadumdum pa mo? No, na ay variants ang COVID-19. Okay? Same with the English language. The pronunciation, the sound that you're hearing right now may be based from the standard English American language or the British kind of English language or maybe the Filipino kind of English language. Depende. Naapod tayo klase-klase nga accent, no? Klase-klase nga word structures and even the lexicon. The differences of the accents, lexicon, and the word structures are very common in the world Englishes. Itawag sa world Englishes, it is because of the fact that there are existing Englishes nga nagkalain-lain po sila. Okay? That's the very nature of why we are explaining Kashru's idea or theory in three concentric circles. Are you still with me? So the first circle class, take note ha. First, don't mind the perfect circle ha. Pag magdrawing, mungkin sa mga drawing o ano, o perfect circle. Wala, di ba? So don't mind this. The inner circle, okay? Inner circle. Take note. Inner circle. Inner ba inner? I N N E R. Okay. Inner circle. And ang sa inner circle daw, these are the countries that the English language, ang ilang L1 daw, or ang first language, gikan sa pagkabata pa nila, is ang L1 nila is ang English language na. Okay? Their L1 is the English language. Countries like United States of America, United Kingdom, New Zealand, Australia, and Canada. Okay? Those places, ang ilang first acquired language is English. Okay? That's why the accent is very eloquent. No? When they speak, it's very fluent. It's because ang um, na-introduce nga language, maskin gamay pa, gi anad naman ng English. Kaya mo may ilang language, lisod sad. Kung sa Surigao so, sila nagdako, Ang ani gyud ang ila accent, no? So there is a difference. Okay? The L1 here is again English language. Next circle is the outer circle, okay? The outer circle. The outer circles, maupod ni ang L2 nila is English language or the second language, di ba? Ang atong first language is either Bisaya, kinsay can say, uh, raise your right hand now if your L1 is English. If, if madagma ka sa una and then mo yung unay mong mga, oh, get up! Ana. Pero lain mangod sa amo, good, kaya pag matumba, kay bunayan mang kahinoonisan. Diba? Pakasipgan pa kao. Imbis kaya natumba na, dapat i-comfort ang bata, ang mga 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 Filipina. Yaw-yawan pa kao, tapos kibiton pa kao diri. Okay? So, wala, wala yung L1 nila English? Okay. 
sa outer circle, ang English language nila is the second, um, yes, the L2 is English language. Okay? Countries such as India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Philippines, Nigeria, South Africa, Singapore, Jamaica, and etc. Those countries, they use English language as their second language. Second language ang ilang tag consider English language ang ilang gi consider nga L2. Okay? Ang L2 nila is English language. Diman it. Now, the outer circle, they learned, na notice ninyo mas daghan ang ano, ang countries sa outer circle compared sa inner circle. Bilang ako no, pila ka buo. Di ba mas daghan, matamataha ka? Di ba mas daghan sa outer circle? Okay? Now, there is this last circle, kasi three concentric circles man, inner, sunod, outer and then the last one is the expanding circle okay the expanding circle maupod ni ang ilang um unsa pa ni ang english language nila is not their l2 not even their l3 but they just use the english language for take note business and transactional purposes okay Business and transactional purposes Ang usage of the English language Sa expanding circle Countries such as China Korea Japan Indonesia Ethiopia Saudi Arabia Egypt And many more Okay They use English language Have you noticed the Chinese? See there's this famous actor, Jackie Chan, no? Jackie Chan, maglisod pa siyang English, no? Even though na siya sa Hollywood, he made lots of movies with um, American actors, nga sikat kaayo, but the English language is not very fluent when spoken by Jackie Chan, okay? And many um, Chinese people also would agree na ang English language diligyud sila maayo kay musulti ana it's because they just use English language for transactional or business purposes only not on a daily basis where language is used or the English language is used okay that's the expanding circle excuse me take note sa katong mga countries okay Sige. Why is this the why is this a thing? Why is this even a matter sa ato ah, as English majors? Nganong si Braj Kashru nag nag uh, nag propose man, why did he propose an idea just like this? It's because of the differences of the English? Yes, that's one thing, no? But the other is, there is a statistical prediction of the users of English language by the year of 2050. No? Aside from Braj Kashru, aside from this guy proposing this concept or this theory, or maybe an idea or component, there is also a very interesting fact or prediction by the researchers, but you have to take note of this, okay? In 2050 Dao, okay? In 2050, the English as sole or first language, ang speakers ng English language, for example, or to be exact here, in 2050, um, ang estimation is 433 million Okay 433 
million. Meaning to say, the English speakers, no, as their first language, L1, mauni ang number of people by 2050. Meaning to say, ang nag ang countries gani asa patong mga countries where the uh, English language is their ano first language sa asaman nga circle inner circle very good now by 2050 daw mu abut na siya 433 million okay here's another thing English as an additional or second language Ang L2, this is L1, ha? This is L1. But another estimation na sa L2, muabot daw o by 2050, okay? Stay with me. By 2050, 668 million na daw pag-abot sa speakers of English language as their second language. So, What's the significance of the statistics there or the estimation there? Meaning to say that more from those outer from those people that uh, come from outer circle will speak the language or the English language compared to those that are part in the inner circle. Why is the why why is this even a thing? Because here's the controversy. Okay? Here's the intriguing part. <clears throat> people coming from the inner circle, I mean now, people coming from this circle, sa inner circle, they claim na ilaha daw ang English language. Okay? English language belongs to them. Do you agree? Do you agree? Yes. Why so? English language belongs to this circle. What's the basis actually? If you try to look at this number, these numbers suggest na wait, wait, wait. Ila inyuha di ang English language, ha? Nga nung mas daghan man speakers sa English language or users of the English language as L2. It's the same language. Don't tell me it's different. But what's the basis? That's the exact controversy. Because people here tend to claim that English language comes from them and English language ultimately and exclusively belongs to them. That's the issue. Okay? Do you think Nga maugyo di ang tag iya sa English language. Let's find out. So, those people come from here, they often call the English language as Metropolitan English. Okay? Uh, metropolitan. Meaning, it's very earthly. Okay? Earthly or it belongs really the the lingua franca meaning to say the the world or universal language ba is english language and they tend to claim again these people trying to come uh, trying to claim that the metropolitan english belongs to them ultimately and they're trying to steal the credit but here's the thing Numbers don't lie. Okay? Estimations don't lie because from now on, mas naghan ang speakers sa English language as L2 compared sa ilaha. Notice the countries. Gagmay lang ang dire, di ba? Compared sa outer circle. Notice the number of, of countries. Numbers of countries sa inyong, sa inyong notes. Uh, may magda mas daghan sa outer circle or sa inner circle? Outer circle. It's a very fundamental way of looking the numbers. Okay? So, mas daghan ang countries sa outer circle and we use language as our second language. 
It's very evident here in the Philippines. I'm using one right now. I'm using the English language right now. So I'm considered as a speaker of the language, and so are you. Diba? The issue, don't forget the issue ha, na ilang claim. Ayaw na kalimti. Nga sila daw ang tag-iya sa English language. Okay? Sige. So, there are approximately 375 currently, no? As this study, is, by the time that this study was conducted, currently there are approximately 375 million speakers. Currently, no? 375 million speakers of English language as their L1. Okay? From this, as the uh, this, this study is conducted, maybe um, last year, 2022 or 2021, compared to 2015 a year, pag gikan daw sa 375, mo abut siyag 433. Okay, the increase, okay, that's fair. And 375 million gihapon sa um on sa pani? As L2, okay? L1 currently ha by the time that this study was conducted. L1 and L2. Okay? 375 million speakers of the English language. So it's quite fair, no? The the scale here is equal. Okay? So ang ang speakers parehas lang. But the estimation goes higher by the year 2050. And there are 750. Iman ilang ang numbers ha. I don't want you to do math here because English majors mo iman ilang ang statistics, okay? Dili na problem solving din eh. 750 million speakers coming from the expanding circle. Are you still following? Okay. 300, I mean, um, 750 million coming from the uh, expanding circle. Ang speakers of English language. Okay. That's the number. Or English as a foreign language ang ila, EFL. English as a foreign language because wala na sa ila ha, wala na sa ilang L1, wala put sa ilang L2. Gigamit lang nila for business lang yun. For example, mag pa deliver lang og ano, og, for example, there's an international shipment. Gamit lang kaog English language. For those kinds of purposes. But for communicative purposes, no. Seldom lang yun mo gamit og English language. This means, take note, this means that more non-native speakers than native speakers of the English language. There are more speakers coming from the non-native speakers. Are we considered native speakers of the English language? No. Because English is not our first language. Makonsider lang ni mong native ka sa isa kalingwahe pag mauna ang imong L1. Okay? But the idea here, the numbers here, totally dictate that more non-native, uh, there are more than non-native than native speakers of the English language, as you can see in the numbers. Non-native speakers ang dinhidili. Non-native speakers. Right? Mas naghan kita na naggamit og English language. Sige, try to analyze first the numbers. Diba? Mas naghan ang speakers of the English language as their L2. Okay? <clears throat> Sige. Now, you have to just grasp the world Englishes, no? The three concentric circles and the issue nga nung um, ang taga inner circle ang nag-claim na they own English language. Okay? You have to grasp all of these things I mentioned. Now we move forward to another set of topic. Wala tayo eraser, no? 
Sige, ano na lang nato, singit na lang nato. Make sure na nagfa-follow gyapon mo ha para dili mo mawala. Ma- Let's introduce the Philippine English. The Philippine English. Ana na lang. Okay? The Philippine English. Sir, gikan ta sa World Englishes, nganong ni jump mong dayon ta sa Philippine Englishes? Because Philippines or Philippine English is one variation or variant of those world Englishes. Philippines, part, man, part ba ng world dili? Part. Do we use English language? Yes. Therefore, our type of English, even our accent, no? even our accent matters. Okay? So, this is one type or one variation of those existing world Englishes. Okay, so there is an issue. Okay, there is an issue. Na ang Filipinos daw or Philippine English is not really a contributor of the English language. Okay, there is an issue. <clears throat> I have here a table that I want you to visualize by yourselves, but I'm sure that you will get this as I explain this one. Sige. Ang contributors are ang countries na nag-contribute sa new words sa English language. Okay? There are con- the, the, sa English language mang good, if we study the, the history of the English language, there are contributors of words mang good. Na ay mga words from other countries na na nasa dictionary ng English na ginagamit na ng English speakers, even native English speakers. Okay? Na ay mga words ning ana. For example, if you try to etymologically search the word, no? its etymological meaning, for example, the word philosophy, if you try to search the etymological meaning or the etymology of the philosophy word, it came from Greek word philos and sophia, no? the love of wisdom, if translated to English. No? Meaning to say, Ang philosophy nga nag-exist sa dictionary na ito karoon, if you search your... Ano yung dictionary? Na mo no? I-search ang philosophy nga word sa Miriam Webster's dictionary. Na ang word nga philosophy, I assure you. Correct? Correct? Na ano? So, naaman sa English language, but if you search the origin of the word, the etymology, it, cre- it came from a Greek word, philo, so... Fia. Meaning to say, those words from Greek, Latin, French, even Filipino words contribute kita sa vocabulary, overall vocabulary ng English. Okay? We contribute to the general vocabulary of the English language. Are you getting my point? Okay? So, English is not just coming or English does not just um, fall to the idea na gikan na yun ang words din he. Okay? In fact, the contributors of the English words are coming mostly from the outer circle. Let me show the table. Sa mga new Englishes, okay, these are the countries or the English or the types of Englishes na nakakontribute sa new words that are arising right now. Okay? Kenyan English, number one. Kenyan English. Sige. Next one, sa Africa ha? Sa Africa pa ng continent. Africa sa Kenya, or Kenyan English. Nigerian English. Sa South Asia naman, Indian English. Yes, there are words ca- coming from India that are present in the English dictionary right now. Okay? Present yun siya. Pakistani English na pod. Southeast Asia. Sa Southeast Asia pod, number one ang Filipino English. Number one kita nang sunod lang si Malaysian English and Singaporean or Singapore English. So, why is it that we are number one contributor of the English language? Because since 2016, 
words like pansit, halo-halo, and many more Filipino languages, comfort room, or CR, na ana siya sa Oxford English Dictionary. Meaning to say, pag jaon sa dictionary, commonly na used ang words by the majority of the people. Okay? And it originated mostly or 100% yun nag-originate sa Philippines. Ang halo-halo ba dyan? Haman gikan. Haman gikan na word dyan, halo-halo. Sa Philippines. Diri mismo. Okay? It's not present sa Western cultures. It's not present from... Uh, it's not present to other countries. No? It's only in the Philippines. Okay? In fact, sa mga vloggers, di ba, matagawan ganit sila pag makatilaw sila mga Filipino foods, no? And halo-halo is very common sa ato, ah. That's why, because of the frequent use of the words na adopt siya sa other people outside of these countries, outside of this specific country, and na-add siya sa dictionary. Lexicographers or those that are considering a word nga ma-include sa dictionary, ilang mo na i-examine if daghan yun, for example, halo-halo. I am a lexicographer or I studied lexicon. No? I usually, I am the one capable of putting the word into the dictionary. May nga na, lexicographers ang magtrabaho dyan. Their basis mainly is if that word present bag yun siya sa kadaghanan nga tao, nagayus bag yun, ang mga tao ana ang word, halo-halo, ay kung ingna, wala pa mo katilaw ana. Maybe even na ay diliganahan. No? But it's very common here in our country. And it's been adopted and used, the word itself is used frequently by Filipinos and nanotice na ng lexicographers na add sa dictionary. We are number one contributors. Dirty ice cream. Kana nga word. Sa Philippines, yung mga nag-exist. Dirty ice cream. Na, di ay nasa gawas. Wala man na. Ice cream naman dito. I will eat some ice cream. Dili man mo lang sila na give me a dirty ice cream. But here in the Philippines, our variation or variant of the Philippine English, dirty ice cream does not mean literally dirty. No. Dirty ice cream means those ice creams nga magdagta ni mo sa streets. Like sorbetes, kanang tagsingko. Na na sa streets wala. Na ah. Okay? That's our dirty ice cream. That's our type of Philippine English. CR. CR, ba'y tawagan na sa gawas? Restroom man na. Atua ka man ng CR? Asa ka mag-CR? Huh? Restroom ang tawag na sa gawas. Mapa mo ka notice? Mapa no? Or have you noticed this before? Bullpen. Bullpen, may tawag na dito ah. Pen raman. Oh, you see where we are going? You understand the point? Poha. Sabtan. Now we are one of the great contributors of the development of the English language. New Englishes to ha? Kato na mga countries akong gipang litok sa table. Table 1, New Englishes or New Words. Okay? Number 1 sa Southeast Asia is Philippines. Yan eh. Sa older Englishes, contributors ng mga old words. Mga old words ba? Mga karaan. Archaic words. Old Engl older Englishes, North America, South America, a Canadian English, UK, those countries na nabilong sa inner circle. 
And they contribute what kinds of Englishes? Old. So, you claim Manila ngay lahang English language. How is it theirs? Where in fact, the contributors of the new words that are arising came from his, uh, this circle. Are you getting now the point? Do you still agree na nabilong ang English language sa ilaha? Do you still agree? Yes or no? Again, do you agree? Yes or no? No. Okay? Because the data suggests na dili yun sila ang tag sa language. We are all users of the language. In fact, mas daghantag na contribute. Hindi naman sa, mag, uh, sa pagmamayabang. Di ba? But we add more words to the English vocabulary or dictionary compared to those that are in the inner circle. Right? So, we have to be very careful on claiming something, in claiming something. That the metropolitan English daw, ilahagi daw. Okay? So, it says here, na as listed, Filipino English is included in the new Englishes because we are part of the world Englishes nga atong discussed earlier. Okay? And these assumptions are like this, no? There are assumptions according to the data that I just uh, presented, okay? The phenomenal spread of English carried through globalization, mainly because of globalization or sa pagpalaganap ng isa kabutang, the process of spreading something through social media, our culture here, atong street foods, ato lang na i-vlog, mukanat na or ma-view na sa tagalain nga nasod. Okay? That's the advantage. That's one process of globalization. Okay? That's globalization already where our ideas are globalized or spread in the entire planet from countries to countries. Money globalization. Okay? So, ang language, specifically, our culture, because culture and language are inseparable. Good. Every culture has a specific language. Kultura ng taga Surigao na apod may Surigao nun na language. Kultura ng mga Manilenyo na apod sila'y uh, Tagalog language. Okay? Especially those specific tribes. Their culture and tradition differ and their also, their, 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 our languages also, their languages also differ from our languages. Okay? Especially in dialects. And sa Philippines, lain na nga tong kultura, Okay? We celebrate fiestas and line po na tong language compared to the Americans and compared to those that are living in the West. Sabdan. Okay? So, the globalization resulted into the diffusion of language, meaning to say the spread of language because of the examples that I gave you. Simply ragod na pag-vlog-vlog rin mo diha and magamit kag bisaya, No? Kana mga bisaya ang mga vlogger, di ba? Na adapt dato ilang language. We try to mock them, we try to copy them and imitate their accents and words, no? That's a small process of spreading the language. Okay? Natakdan ta sa language and it's a matter of language acquisition and on a wider scale our culture such as mukaon ta nang halo-halo gyud pag pasuan ta na spread man siya outside of this country uh, apart from the Philippines alone na adapt siya ng other people okay diffusion or spread of language ang result okay such diffusion has produced different Englishes of course because of the Philippine English because of the African English because of the Australian English because of the Indian Chinese Japanese English na ay world Englishes the idea here is not to belittle and discriminate each type of English. Okay? Not to suggest nga sila yung sa English language. It's not about that. Okay? It's not like that at all. Because, in fact, our words, no? Our words show 
And it is very clear that we belong not just in using the English language, but we belong ultimately in developing the English language. We are the great contributors, one of the great contributors of the English language. In fact, ang Philippines or ang Filipino people, according to a study, ha, ang Filipino daw or Filipinos daw are one of the most fluent speakers of the English language in Asia, among Asia, among Asian countries, rather. Kita ang pinaka-fluent daw. Okay? Sige, may bawaan naman na kung mag-oral kita sa midterm. Mag-oral ta? Sige, okay naman good, Jay. Philippine English man na tagtawag na to. Pwede naman. Uh, for me, sir, according to me. Um, long ago, good job, ito, Philippine English. Okay ka? Midterm? Dili? Okay. Ay, ang mga maningog. Okay ka siguro? Ad- <laughs> Dili. So, do you get the point? No. Nasabdan pa ko? Are you still following? Sige. So, again, those types of contributions nga gikan sa Atoa and sa other countries, okay, you have to be familiar with those and grasp the concept itself. Sige. So, this idea of nga nung gipakita man ako ang, ang Philippine English, okay, nga nung gi-introduce man, gi-introduce man ako ang Philippine English first in the first place. Because most people, I'm not saying all people, ha, majority or most of the people coming from here, even here, would claim also, apart from, apart from claiming na ilaha ang English language, they also claim that Filipinos suck in speaking language. The English language, to be specific. We are not very articulate now. And according here, no? The proper word, appropriate word, or the exact word, yud. So the issue of Filipinos trying hard, okay, trying hard to be English speakers should not be null or should be null, and that Filipinos have their own way of speaking English as if they own it. Balikon ako, okay? We have to scratch and eliminate the idea of Filipinos that we are trying hard daw in speaking the English language. Is that true? I'm using one right now. I'm a Filipino. Is my English really ano, unintelligible to you? Or masabdan siya? Masabdan man! Oh. Therefore, I'm not trying hard. Okay? Our words suggest that we are not trying hard. Filipinos, I'm speaking in behalf of the Filipino people. Okay? Ito, nalobat na noon. So, if you are still wondering, nga nung gingan lang pag trying hard na mga... Nga nung trying hard man po ang mga Filipinos... We showed them a study. Okay? We showed them this, these numbers. We showed them our kind of English. Okay? For us not to be belittled by those speakers in the inner circle. And the idea here, just because people, paminaw, just because people coming from here can speak fluently doesn't mean it's the sole basis of the excellence in speaking the English language. Okay? It's not the fluency because I can sound as elegant as I want here. But if I use the incorrect grammar, I still make no sense. It's about the variations of the English language and it demands to be respected. Our accent mainly, no? Because pinagtatawanan tayo pag nagsasalita tayo ng English. If we try to speak the English language, we are mocked by many people, especially the the people coming from the inner circle. Okay? So, 
we should not settle for less because the study, the empirical evidence shows that we are capable of speaking the English language. Okay? We belong or the English language belongs to everybody, not just for those na nabilong sa inner circle. Porket fluent mag-English, diha na sa inyo daigikan. In fact, historically speaking, if you try to read and learn the history of the English language, nasakop pa na sila ang UK. Sa una, English language came from a UK, no? what is presently known as UK or the England. No? Name mo siyang English language. The English language is flourished because of the contributions of many words and many languages. It's it's like it's like this, no? English language is like a very large creole composed of many different pigeons. Meaning to say, ang pigeons kato klasiklasi ng mga um, chunks of languages or parts of languages na naka contribute sa beautification ng isa ka English language. You get my point? Okay? If it weren't for those languages, wala gi English language nga may tabo or wala English language nga mo flourish or ma beautify. Imagine, old Englishes nga na ilan na contribute. Di ba? Ang new Englishes, gikan din eh, sa outer circle. So, how much more if mas daghan pag yun ang atong words by 2050? Okay? This is the estimation. No? As people are using, especially those people na coming from outer circle, if we continue to use our knowledge, linguistic knowledge, in English language, maka-invent ka ng sana all na to, karon sa Philippines. It's very common. Naniin na mga lexic lexicographers, ana. Eventually, ma-add na po na sa dictionary. Because the basis is again, kung unsag yun kadaghan ang users sa words. Okay? So, let's continue our discussion. Okay? Trying hard kita mag-English? Dili. Dili. Okay? We must have the confidence to speak using the English language. Because we are not going to settle the derogatory claim na dili yun para sa ang English. This one or this whole discussion suggests na dili sila ang tag -iya. English is for everybody. Sabtan? Okay, very good. So, <clears throat> before we proceed, any clarifications? Wala? Okay, let's continue. Wala gyud tay eraser da. Sige, maigo pa man sab diha. Sorry for the ano ha, disorganized writing. My my penmanship is not really that good when it comes to ano, board writing. But when it comes to ano sa sinulat gyud sa papel, yaot gihapon. Okay? Yaot gyud gihapon. Amo ka gyud gihapon. Sige. Sabtan sa Philippine English. Sabtan? Si World English, yes. Sabtan? Communicative competence. Sabtan? Okay. Let's move forward sa Standard English versus World English. Sige. Na naman tayo World English. No? Klasi-klasi na mga English. Onsa mag dapat sundo na to. Okay? That's why the Topic Standard English versus World English. So, what exactly is the English that we should follow? On sa mga dapat ang ang English or type of English that we should adhere, okay? So there is a concern, no? 
the concern about non-natives uh, this actually uh, no, this actually is related to teaching okay because you're all aspirants no as educators is that true mag teacher ba yun? sure na pwede pa mo back out teacher na yun? what's your basis nga nung mag teacher man mo Para matagaan na mong cake sa Teacher's Day? <laughs> ha? Kaya white choice? Ano sa po mga common na, mga, mga reasons sa una? When I was in college, it's very common nga, walay choice. No? Second option, ang education. Um, there's also a reason nga, wala lang, gusto lang mga graduate. Tapos, Gipilang education kay undecided. Kinsa may ana? Kinsa may ana? Gipili po ng education kay wala ka pasar sa first choice sa entrance exam. First choice gyud din niyo. Unsa may first choice? Ha? Nursing. Di man said first choice na akong education. Um, first choice yun is well in high school I was very idealistic I want to be a professional athlete okay I don't care about education but things change pag college na nako nag criminology nag back out na pod nag nautical na pod and then nag back out na pod until na pod sa education I don't know what happened to me okay so nag cream mm, hindi ko gusto makapatay og tao <laughs> uh, biblical reason so going back to the topic memorize the term nga non nest ha non nest this is related ha din eh this is related on the rivalry between standard english versus world english okay the non nests nato nga gipasabot class non nests nade slash okay sorry non nests or the non native english speaking teachers gamay ni s okay non native english speaking teachers do we belong here do we belong here diba we are non natives english speakers diba English speakers kita, pero ang English language, it's not our native language. Correct? No. Ang non-nests are these people coming from the outer circle. Okay? Timan niya. Coming from people na taga-outer circle. Okay? Non-nests ang tawag. Or non-native English speaking teachers. Okay? Teachers. Um, concern here is that non-nests now, excuse me, they may not be reliable, na na po ni issue, no? They may not be reliable in teaching a language they do not own. So, I am teaching you right now. I'm using the English language. There is a study claiming na dili daw reliable. I belong here, right? Sa non nests non nest ko. Okay? There is a study claiming na dili daw reliable ang non nests Why is that? Musugot mo, ana? Upcoming or future teachers? Sugot mo, ana? Na dili daw to reliable mo tudlo. Using the language we do not own. Na na po ng owning a language ng mga issue. Mga pilingon yun ni sila, no? No? Porkit mga fluent mag, mag-English. But if we use the Filipino accent, will they understand, will they understand it? They are claiming the ownership of the language again. Because of the idea ng ang Filipinos daw or non-nests. Filipinos belong there, here. Non-nests are not specifically reliable when it comes to teaching a content using the language they do not own. 
and that implies using the English language. Correct? No, that implies using the English language and it's very obvious here na ang notion or ang idea ngayong unana it's very untrue. Dili gyud siya reliable pod nga idea because again na discuss na nato nga ano. Okay? We are one of the great contributors of the English language. Okay? But this notion or idea is to be scrapped or to be put in garbage because knowing that again no one owns the English language. Walay tagiya ana. It's for everybody. It's like an open book to be read by everybody. Ngan ang English language. Okay? The issue now is this. Okay? Wala may tagiya sa English language. It belongs to everyone. Okay? The issue now is this. How to teach English in a world English setting. Daghan mga klasiklasing na English. Okay? We are not only the contributors of the Filipino English, naputay English, uh, Indian English, naputay classic classic Chinese, Japanese, Kenyan, Nigerian English. Maybe those words coming from those countries na contribute yun, no? Sa, sa English language overall. Unsaon mang yun pagtudlo sa isa ka material, sa isa ka content, using the English language. That's why there is a rivalry going on. Unsa mang yun dapat. Okay? Dili man ta reliable daw. Ouch. Na nests. Dili yun reliable. Okay? Dili yun ta daw reliable. Pagtudlo. That's the first premise. Okay? The earlier premise suggests that we are not very capable. Not even reliable. Sa pagtudlo. How belittling and derogatory is that term? Dili reliable. In fact, Philippine English, one of the pillars of the world Englishes. Okay? Isa ta sa mga haligi ng English language because we are the great contributors or one of the great, again, contributors of the English language. So the issue is this. Di man ta reliable on saan mang yun pagtudlo. In a world full of different variations of English language. On saan man ito pagtudlo sa mga bata. First year pa man mo, I want you to be informed and to be inculcated with this. Okay? On saan man pagtudlo sa mga bata, sa ito mga sudyante ng isa ka material without um, without them having any difficulties in understanding the lesson. Sige. First of all, you need to know this, no? The Canadian authors, you don't need to familiarize the names, in 2009, stated that teachers need to create a balanced approach. Okay? Balanced approach now in teaching. Meaning to say, balanced approach to instruction that suits their particular context and, take note, students' needs. Meaning to say, you need to understand linguistics, right? But you are, your native language is not English language. Should I just use the standard English whole throughout this class? Ideally, yes. Because that's the standard. But, study, let's be very technical here. The study suggests na dapat daw maggamit ta ang balanced approach. What do we mean by balanced approach exactly? We need to examine to troubleshoot and to determine the student's needs. Unsa may kinahanglan ninyo? Well, your need is to be um, filled with information. Okay, that's one. How do I do that as a teacher? How should I do that as a teacher? Well, maybe one thing is to make you understand using a different type of approach, namely the multilingual approach, which I'm using right now. Para mas masabtan. Because communica uh, communication can be achieved 
effective communication can be achieved if we understand each other kaysa dilit na magkasinabot. Nay, Filipino words. Of course, that's